If you've ever used Blender's compositor or delved into tutorials about its functionality, chances are you've probably encountered this node at some point. This is Blender's viewer node, and it allows you to preview almost any type of image in Blender's compositor, including bitmapped images or raster images such as OpenEXR, TIFF, PNG, JPEG, and many more. And while its main purpose is to view 3D renders, it also supports video files and image sequences. But what if I told you that the viewer node is actually one of the most useless nodes in Blender. Allow me to challenge a widely held belief. The viewer node, often regarded as indispensable, may in fact be the most superfluous element in the compositor's toolkit. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, and welcome to Game Abuse Studios. So why do I hate this node so much? Imagine for a second that you have a sizable network of nodes applying various effects, and you choose to incorporate a viewer node in order to visualize these effects. This is a, uh obviously blown out exaggeration of what I'm trying to get at, but I think it effectively conveys my point. It's distracting to see what you're trying to work on haphazardly plastered behind, well, everything. I mean, having the nodes right on top of what you're working on makes it kind of hard to see what you're doing. And don't even get me started on all of the glitchy, touchy, invisible crap that it does. Like, I, I mean, we're... Come on, where's the image that I rendered? While I know now that the backdrop option being disabled is probably the culprit, I'd still like to know how it occasionally gets turned off when I'm sure I haven't touched it. But that's not even the worst of it. On top of it somehow being turned off randomly, I've experienced it flickering in and out of existence, even worse than my presence here on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, I get it, I get it. You can stop now. Although I haven't used the viewer node in over four years, so it's possible that the recent updates have addressed that issue. But again, I haven't used this node in a long time. And honestly, you shouldn't have to either. So what if I told you that there's a better way? Instead of relying on the viewer node, we have an alternative node at our disposal that can not only serve as a suitable replacement, but do the job even better. Pfft, what node could possibly do that? <laughs> yeah. Believe it or not, Blender's composite node can actually function as a viewer node. What a lot of people don't realize is that you can actually view the output of the composite node right here in Blender. See, whenever you render an image, it's actually the composite node that's responsible for displaying the image in the resulting render window. If you've spent a lot of time in Blender and observed the various buttons within the interface, you might have noticed that the render window behaves very similarly to a detached image editor. Well, take a closer look. Maybe it looks like a detached image editor because it is a detached image editor. So if the composite node is responsible for displaying any images that you render to this window, then what happens if we leave this render window open and start compositing without a viewer node? Uh, oh, right. There we go. <clears throat> the render result window will actually display the same results as the viewer node. But keep in mind that this window is still just an image editor. If we change the editor type in any one of these divided windows to an image editor, we can come up here, click this little button, and choose the render result. Well, 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 would you look at that? All the compositing and work I put into rendering, which was nothing, <clears throat> elegantly condensed into a singular compact space, effectively making it so that we don't need the render window or the viewer node while we're in the compositor. Oh, but if you think that's cool, I'll do you one even better. We're going eh. to turn, eh, uh, What I meant to say was we're going to turn this into this. 
To start off, let's open up a brand new Blender project and head over to the Compositing tab. This is what Blender's compositor looks like by default, and a lot of people just use it as is. But there's a lot of hidden potential in the compositor that's not even being utilized, like the ability to just drag and drop files in right through the interface, or have a nice clean preview of what you're doing without having to set it up first, or even just setting it up to use your GPU instead of your CPU, which is a new feature that cuts the compositing time by a considerable amount. So why don't we go ahead and just set this up. The first thing we're going to do is create and rearrange all of these windows. In order to create a new window, simply move the cursor to the corner of a window, then click and drag outwards. This window that we've just created is going to be a file browser. To set it as a file browser, all we have to do is hit this little button and go all the way over here to the option labeled, well, file browser. Now the reason we want this to be a file browser is because this way we can easily navigate to images or videos and simply drag and drop them into the compositor. And now that it's set to be a file browser, let's go ahead and click this little button. This is just my personal preference, but I like to set the display mode for files and folders to be thumbnails so I can see a nice little preview of the videos and images I'm importing. Also, if you have a folder dedicated to your projects, I suggest going ahead and navigating to it. That way, it'll always be here whenever you need it. I have mine right here in my bookmarks, so that's all I need to do. I also like to keep my volumes above my system files because it just looks better to me. Anyway, we're not done with this section yet, but in order to make it fit properly, we need to go ahead and set up some of the other stuff. So down here, we're going to set this window to be a compositor rather than a dope sheet. If we ever need the dope sheet again, we can just drag the timeline up and set it to be a dope sheet. But chances are you probably won't be using the dope sheet while compositing unless you're animating. So set it up however you want it. Now, the old compositor up here isn't doing us any justice just sitting there and looking pretty. So let's go ahead and set this window to be an image editor and link it to the render result just like I did before in my little example. Not that example. This example. Now we're going to go ahead and render an image out by hitting F12 on our keyboard. The size of the image that appears here can largely vary depending on what resolution your PC is running. My PC is running in 4K, so a 1080p render will take up one quarter of my screen size. But if your computer screen is 1080p, it's going to take up your entire screen and look pretty much like this. This is because the default rendering size over in the rendering tab is set to be 1080p as well. So if you're running in 1080p, you're going to want to come up up here to view and set the zoom to be a 1 to 2 ratio or 50% of the actual image size. Which by the way, this is new. I just love how the devs of Blender are adding minor touch-ups to little details like this. It's super cool and definitely a welcomed feature, and it's sure to make things easier to understand for people with a simple mind like me. Oh, who am I kidding? My mind isn't simple. It's all over the place. I should just quit YouTube and go get on the street corners and- <clears throat> <laughs> anyway, now that you have the right size, let's go ahead and drag this border up until you just barely don't cover that little white line at the bottom. And then do the same for the sides with the file browser. Now that everything is positioned correctly, let's go back to the file browser and set the thumbnail size to fit a little bit better. 61 looks about right for me, but it might not be the right size for you. So feel free to mess around with this until you get it looking the way you want. And that should be everything. Well, aside from checking the use nodes box, which I completely forgot to do. Eh. If you want to keep this setup exactly as it is, all you have to do is head over to the layout tab so that it doesn't just load into the compositor every time you open Blender. Then navigate to File, Defaults, and save your startup file. And forever forget about the atrocity that is the viewer node. Thanks for watching. Oh, and uh, enjoy the bloopers. Oh my. Oh dear god. Why is that button halfway off the screen? <sighs> I just praised you guys for attention to detail and then I find this? What the hell? And that's actually everything. Now take your piss and shove it into a cactus. You know, yep, just thorns and all, just shove it into that cactus.
I forgot the script. While its main purpose is to view my while its main purpose it also has a big and we're gonna stick it right into this pineapple. <laughs> oh my god, what am I doing with my fing life? <clears throat> <clears throat> so what if I told you I hate you, 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 I may in fact be the most super f super floss, super superfluous. 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 God. Sometimes you just gotta take what you can get. And a pineapple is... A pineapple is all I can get. I just needed a little suck. That's all.